do you keep an eye on uh, other young writers etc that are coming up like do you spot other kiwi writers and go oh there's one to watch do you know of anyone else coming up uh, that you've that you've been impressed with there are some very good writers coming up but i can't read now this is the the difficulty right. with the failing eyesight but certainly i i can look at the illustrators that i, I in children's picture books mm-hmm. But there is there's a lot of New Zealand books that are being sold overseas now. And will you and would it be fair to say that you've gone through quite a golden era? I mean the you know, Tessa Duda, Margaret Mahi, yourself. There's a pretty phenomenal period of especially for children in YA of, of writing through I guess you say the seventies and eighties especially. It's a pretty special time to be a, a New Zealand author in that time? Well it was a special time because um, when we started out, we, Margaret and I were beh- both had our first children's books published in other countries right. because there wasn't a New Zealand publisher who would do. So there was something very new happening. It wasn't a renaissance of children's books so much as a naissance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just it happened. Yeah. And even when I started, it was thought that people who wrote children's books um, were uh, couldn't write adult material mm. they'd failed at real writing some people used to say to me when are you going to get back to real writing and I'd say this is as real as it gets Yeah, and also I mean it must be hugely satisfying to think you've been an influence on two three generations of New Zealanders coming through it must be an amazing thought like I said, I mean, my, my daughter, I think I told you this off air, mm-hmm. if I'm repeating myself in an hour, I apologise, but my daughter who was 15 was jealous that I got to talk to you today. She wanted to come in to the podcast and the book she went running to look for to get you to sign was Chameleon Chameleon. I mean, what age group is Chameleon Chameleon aimed at? Sub three, three, four? Yeah. Yeah. It's very and simple. And that was the one she, yeah, yeah. that was the one she went running to look for to grab and she was like, oh, where's my Chameleon Chameleon? And she's 15. You know, it just must be a, a fascinating, fascinating time. Um, your memories of Margaret, is there anything that stands out for those of us who never met her, Margaret Mahi, that you think you think back fondly of knowing her? Margaret was a good friend and she phoned regularly while I phoned her and we always ended up making up stories on the phone. Oh, yeah. But, uh, we, we, she was quite ill at the end before. Before the cancer, she also had Parkinson's, so she was uh, not steady on her feet. But she was all, always very cheerful, and she always had jokes. So she, when she phoned me and she said, oh, should I have just fallen down the stairs, and I was carrying a lemon squeezer, <laughs> and I've now got the mark of the lemon squeezer on my right butter, because <laughs> she'd fallen on it. And I thought she was joking. And no, it wasn't. It was true. Absolutely. <laughs> and she was making a joke out of it. Wow. She had a wonderful imagination. Usually writers write and speakers speak. You know, we're not good at both. Yep. Margaret was superb at both. And once there was a program called Kaleidoscope. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we were both on it because we both had our first books published in the same year. We were both born in the same year. So they did something with us together at Margaret's place. And at the end of a hilarious weekend, there was much <laughs> red wine and Margaret's rabbits were hopping around the floor and trying to chew through all the wiring they had in those days with the filming. And the director said, can I, one of you, say something to wind this up? Now, if you've given me a pen and a bit of paper and a whole hour I could have thought of something (laughs) but Margaret said instantly when one embarks on a weekend convivial it can be serious it can be trivial (laughs) just like that just like that that's amazing have you seen her playground you know her playground in Christchurch have you been there no I haven't been there yet amazing it's like you think about someone who impacted you know the children of the nation yeah. so much and you think perfect yeah. a perfect a perfect thing to leave us to leave Absolute, us with oh, yeah. what, what about yourself i mean <laughs> not, not talking about you not being with us but what you know what do you want to leave what do you want 
to be w- with New Zealand for the next 50, 100, 200 years once you've oh, gone back to where you came from, as we talked about earlier? I want New Zealand to continue to be the sort of New Zealand we saw uh, in the, that Christchurch massacre. The way we revealed who we were mm. when that tragedy occurred. I hope that we will always be that nation. Mm. 